Hello and welcome to the 50th tutorial in the Cocos 2DX JavaScript tutorial series and in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to use the accelerometer to move a sprite. In the previous tutorial we set up the accelerometer. This is actually the final tutorial in this uh, series but we will be doing more tutorial series in the future and very soon we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. This tutorial assumes you've done tutorial 49 if you haven't there'll be a link in the description to the source code and as usual there'll be a link in the description to the source code produced from this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and open up the project from tutorial 49. You can't actually test out the accelerometer in the simulator, so I'm only using an app which is down here called Reflector, which will be mirroring my display from my iPhone, which is connected to my Apple Mac, uh, so you can actually see the application. To be able to put an application on your device, you will need to have a developer account or jailbroken or some, something like that. It's not as simple as before, but if you're a developer, chances are you will have a developer account. Okay, this is all good. We set it up here, and in the myapp.js, what you want to do is create a new function. I'm going to go on, it's called on accelerometer function. It takes one parameter, you can call it Excel event, so the braces. First of all, we're just going to create a variable for the window size. Var win underscore size equals cc dot director dot get instance dot get win size. Then we're going to just create a variable for the height and the width. If you don't have to, you can just access it using the wind size, but this will just be a lot easier. So var w equals wind size dot width. Then var h equals wind size dot height. Then var x equals this dot my sprite dot get position here we're just getting the X and the Y position of the sprite because obviously we're going to be moving it around the screen then we do var y equals this dot my sprite dot get position oh, didn't want to do that position get the Y coordinate separate this out a little bit and now we want to actually affect the y, I mean the x and the y, so I'm going to do x equals x plus, and in brackets we're going to do x element dot x, that's possibly in the brackets, not outside, x element dot x times by the width times by 0.1. The axle event dot x is sort of like the offset of how much you're tilting the device using the accelerometer. The w is the width of the screen. The reason we're using the width is because imagine if you have an iPad and an iPad Retina, it's the same ratio, but it has a different resolution. So, and if you factor in the width and the height, you'll look like it's moving the same on like the equivalent size screen, but the actual number of pixels you'll be moving is different but the end result in terms of what the user sees will be similar or the same hence why we use hence why it's good to factor in the width and the height when you do stuff like this 0 0.1 is sort of like a speed variable you can see it like that but again this is not the only way to do it there are many other ways to do it to be able to use the accelerometer this is a simple way to illustrate it we we'll do the same for y H, Y, if I can just change these to Y and Y. And the last thing to do is actually just set the sprite position. So this dot my sprite dot set position. And you will just pass in the X and the Y. And what we're going to do is sort out the formatting before we run it. There we go. It's going to select my iPhone. 
click play. Okay, this is the application I was talking about, Reflector. And I'll be able to show you the application once it's just deployed to my device. Here we go. They load. There we go. I'm just holding the phone steady at the moment. That's the reason it's not really moving. I'm going to tilt it to the top left, down, now the bottom left, now bottom right, top right. And I'm, now I'm going to tilt it to the right, but very slowly. And as you can see, it's moving slowly. But I'm, now I'm going to tilt it to the left, but fast. As you can see, the sprite moves fast. And this is just a simple way to move the sprite around the screen. As I said, you may, may want to do it slightly differently. What I would do is just go back to Xcode. And instead of affecting the Y, I won't actually affect the Y at all. No, I'll leave that. It's commented out. So you're just moving the X and the Y axis. Because sometimes, again, that's all they do, like doodle jump. It only uses the accelerometer for the X axis and maybe a game as well, like real racing, they'll just use it for the X axis. Just load up reflector, there you go. I'm just tilting it left and right and it's just moving left and right. I'm tilting it up and down now and it's not it's not moving up and down at all. Which is great. This is the, this is the way it should be working. Like I said, this is how to use an accelerometer to move a sprite if you have any questions feel free to ask like I said this is also the last tutorial in this tutorial series but we will have more tutorial series uh, in the future when Cocos 2DX version 3.0 is released which it should be in March or so we'll be doing a C++ version round about then we're just going to hold off till the version 3.0 of Cocos 2DX is released also we'll be doing a mini tutorial series very soon on how to support multiple resolutions but not just iPhone and iPad which we, which we covered briefly at the start here but had to also cover Android and other resolution basically because Cocos 2DX is a multi-platform device so we have to look at how to cover the, the different types of resolutions and it's not particularly easy or nice but it's something that we have to cover but yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for all the views and all the sub subscribers that have been subscribing over the past uh, month and a half or so. It's greatly appreciated and thanks for watching.